Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, this is Richard Reviews Children's Books, and today I have for you Jija the Moon by Percy, I'm going to butcher this, Trazis, and Dick Rogesy. And Jija the Moon is actually an Aboriginal Australian story about how we got the moon. And what it turns out is in that culture, the moon was originally a round, fat man. This was the early days of, of the existence of humanity, before the, the idea of death had come. And this man fell in love with a woman that did not love him because he was so funny looking. But he made a magic circle, and he sang love songs to her every night until she fell in love with him, and they had a child... And that child winds up being the first human being ever to pass away. So, in, in the existence of this, the child, the wife, and, and uh, Jija become celestial bodies. And the Jija, who is the moon, his big round body starts as a child in a crib, grows to his full weight, and then slowly deteriorates into a bent-over old man and dies, and then comes back and returns eternally. Jija is the eternal cycle of nature. He is the time of rebirth and death. He is the cycle of life in this culture. Now, one thing I have to say about this particular book is that I do not like the fact that it refers to Aborigines as though it's assumed that they come from Australia. Aborigine means, you know, the first people to live there. Therefore, Aborigines can come from everywhere. I mean, I originally looked at this and thought it was Africa, you know, but it's Australia. And the other thing about this book, there is phrenology. If you look here, you've got a, a gentleman in a G-string in this picture. Uh, maybe that's a woman, actually. You've got the, the round uh, Jija in a loincloth, and I believe you have a naked child. Completely naked child holding something. And, you know, there's some bare-chested women on this page. So, yes, uh, we'll, we'll point out if I can find a definitely G-rated image. Yes, okay. These look like beautiful oil paintings. And you can see that there's very vivid color. A lot of work went into this. This is a beautiful, beautiful book you have to ask yourself, do I want my children to see these naked aborigines? And again, this is for analogy, it's not considered pornographic, but you know how children are, and they might turn around and draw pictures of, of naked aborigines, and their teachers might be, oh my god, what, what are you watching? And, and so there's that. I mean, it's, it's something to understand that the style of artwork for this book may be controversial. You as a parent have to ask yourself, do I want to take that risk? Because on the one hand, you're exposing your child to an obscure culture, one that they probably otherwise would not know about. You're exposing them to animals that live in Australia, which is a good thing, it is a proper thing. But the type of artwork in this book is a little gamey for young children. You just you have to ask yourself the question, is this okay? And you know, I'm not a parent. I don't know. You may be a very progressive parent. You may say, yes, this is okay and I want to take this risk. On the other hand, you might not be so progressive of a parent. You might say, you know, I don't want my children seeing that. That's just up to you. Again, I enjoyed this book, but I'm an adult. I, as an adult, would be wary of showing this to children. That's my opinion. I'd love to hear yours down in the comments below. I am Richard Leland Neal.